executive ITF to the leadership positions, that one of the highest ones in ITF. So it's a pleasure to welcome Benoit, who is speaking about the new era of network management operations. Thank you, Carlos. So it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know much of Spanish except for uh, cervezas, por favor. So uh, I will be talking in English. I will try to speak slower for the online translation, so thanks for this. So uh, I'm Benoit Claes. On behalf of the program committee over there, I would like to introduce an IITF and IAB workshop on next era of network management operations called NEMOPS. All right, so if you want to pay attention to one slide, this is, this is the one. I'm here to discuss this ITF workshop. Who knows about ITF? Very good. It's actually an IAB workshop, Internet Architecture Board. Who knows about the IAB? Okay, I'm going to explain the difference. So the IAB is conducting this workshop, which is on December 3rd to December 5th. It's virtual. So we will have like three virtual calls of maximum three hours, and you are invited. So I'm here to present this workshop and to get feedback from you, whether in person, whether with the survey that we have here, there is like a QR code, or explaining how the workshop will be happening. So I'm here during the entire week for discussions, for collecting feedback, for answering questions about the ITF. I will be in the LACNOC booth most of the time. I learn also that there is this uh, introductions at 4 p.m., so I will be there tomorrow as well. So let's discuss in more detail what it means. So the ITF has a long tradition work with network operators, right? This is actually from the operators that we listen to the new use cases that you have to the new requirements, and that way you are helping defining the new protocols and data models in the ITF. This is also with operators that we explore the new technologies. We just, the previous session was about IPv6, right? So on my side, I'm mainly on the operational aspects of networking. So I'm here to bridge the gap between the ITF and the real world deployment. So the IETF would like to understand from the operators in the room, so that's why I'm happy to be here in LACNIC, but mainly in LACNOG with the operator group, I want to understand from operators what your requirements are. So it's a fact that in the ITF, we don't have enough operators, right? I start to see in the world of operations some new operators joining because if I look at this, the, the stars are aligned for network automation. The networks are becoming so complex these days that we must automate. The technology that we've been loving is on the verge of basically killing us because it's become too complex with the big networks. There is a second reason that sometimes there's concern that the operators are not heard in the ITF, right? So to address this, the ITF did two things. First of all, a new working group called NMOP, Network Management Operation, in the last bullet point, which is focusing on operators' network management. I mean, to cover that later on, but it deals with experiments while defining protocols and data models. I happen to be a co-chair for that working group, so I could speak about this at length. The second thing is that the IAB created this workshop about uh, NEMOPS, right? Now, taking into account the fact that we don't have any enough 
operator voices in the ITF. That's exactly the reason why I'm here. Uh, we decided to reach out to some network operator group, to NANOC in North America, to RIPE in Europe. I will go there because I'm actually from Europe, from Belgium. So Apricot in Asia, or Autocon, and we believe it's important to just go and spend the time with you guys because simply telling, oh, come work with us in the ITF is too simplistic and it doesn't work for various set of reasons. No time, uh, difficult to deal with the ITF. So the IAB is going to, uh, as creating this, this program, we created the, the survey with all the questions we will synthesize the survey results in the paper, right? And then we're going to conduct the network, the NEMOPS workshop. And obviously, we're going to publish a paper as a consequence, as an outcome of it. Let me give you a, a showcase. A couple of years ago, some operators, starting with Swisscom and NTT and Telefonica, started to put in production streaming telemetry with Yang. And they realized that there were a couple of things that were not about right. So the goal is to be able to configure subscription very easily, exactly like I want to have interface counters. I want to have a Yang object for interface counters, for example. I want to send this telemetry over UDP. Why UDP, right? I mean, we spoke about flows in the previous presentation. NetFlow or IP fix is sent over UDP. You're going to stream all the data on a regular basis, and if you lose one packet in your MRTG report, in the morning there was a nice MRTG report that reminds me of the past, right, where it was showing the capacity. If you lose a counter or two in a time series, it's not a big deal. So UDP is perfectly fine. And also what you want to do is stream that directly from line card. Right, the capacity of the streaming is increasing dramatically, exactly like IPFX. We want to be able to add metadata to telemetry. We want to be able to import the telemetry directly into the time series while keeping the semantic of which counter we're looking at. All right. So you see, it's not always that there are issues with the protocols. There are. We found a couple of them, but there are new use cases that are coming. And this integration with Kafka into the time series is absolutely important, because in the end, we want to do closed loop. So this resulted into a couple of documents. One is in the last call, in the NetConf working group, which is network configuration. Two are about to enter the last call. And there are three other ones that are uh, in progress. And the last one I want to stress at the bottom is that there is hackathon implementation. The motto of the ITF is about running code and consensus. Ref consensus and running code. And that's something that sometimes we keep forgetting. But in there, there is implementation in open source and from vendors to make sure it works in an interval way. Now, coming back to the ITF, I ask you a few questions. So, about the ITF. Do you know how to participate in the ITF? Okay, just a few of you. I'll be there to answer all the questions, right? Now, some of the issues we've been looking at are harder because sometimes the operators have no time. It's difficult for operators to spend a week to go to the ITF and to give feedback. And sometimes it's overwhelming to provide feedback. And the last point is more concerning to me. It's, it's about don't feel my operator input is welcome. Well, this is, I'm not sure if you witnessed that, but this is something that should not be the case. So let's discuss about it. Now, coming back to the ITF, right? In blue, you have the seven areas that we have in the ITF. The one that we want to focus on is ops, operations, and management, where the management part is actually about network management protocols and data models. So I could answer all the questions. As Carlos was mentioning, I was one of the 
I was the area director for ops for three terms. Now let's focus on the IAB because it's not well known. It, this is the Internet Architecture Board. And it's a kind of an archi architectural oversight. So it runs workshops like the one we have here to collect information to guide the ITF on what to do next. And it also takes care of the liaison statement. So this is for the IAB. Now, there was a first IAB workshop in network management. So around 2000, the year 2000, we realized that SNMP, who knows about SNMP? Yeah, we all know about SNMP, right? Whether we like it or not. I mean, it does part of the job, right? But it doesn't work for configuration. And this workshop uh, happened in 2002, where we had all the operators in the workshop, and they've been giving us feedback. Why they can't deploy it, why it doesn't work, what they would like to have. And again, before this workshop, the committee went to RIPE, NANOC, etc., to collect feedback. This workshop, 22 years ago, led to that RFC 3535. If you are an operation, I advise you to read it. It's very simple reading with just two sections that are important. Section three on your left, these are operator requirements, 14 requirements. It's very easy to read. But if you work in automation, you, you need to respect those and you need to try to apply those. Let's read one or two of them. It's necessary to make a clear distinction between configuration data, data that describes operational state, and statistics. If you know about SNMP and MIPS, you know the IF admin status and the IF upper status, to be slightly technical. How do you know that one relates to the other? You just know it. Can we have this in an automatic way, right? So, Second one, it's necessary to enable operators to concentrate on the configuration of the network as a whole rather than in the devices. Yes, it's obvious. We want to create services. I want an L3VPN, L2VPN, right? That's what I want to configure. And yes, behind it, there are devices that need to configure, but the services is key. And then in that RFC, there were recommendations. Let me read one of them. The workshop recommends, with strong consensus from both protocol developers and operators, that the ITF focus resources on the authorization of config management mechanisms. So this, these are like good set of requirements and recommendations coming from operators. That RFC 22 years ago led to the entire Yang world with data model driven management. NetConf, ResConf, CoreConf, Core Home, Yang Network Element Module, Yang Service Module, etc., etc. Even the service Yang model that we've got in the ITF. So we could always say, well, it was not fast enough, it's not done right. Sure, but we've been listening. Now, what's happening in the ITF currently, if you're in operations, the first two working groups, NetConf, that stands for Network Configuration, and NetMod, that stands for Network Modeling, those are the ones following up on this data model-driven management with Yang. The first one was NetConf next, ResConf next, configuration of client server, etc. NetMod is about Yang next, but also how to try to have semantic versioning in Yang modules, thing like that. The, the next one is uh, NMob, the one I mentioned already. This is a special working group which is based on experiments, and we've got three experiments. Remember what I mentioned with Swisscom, NTT, Telefonica? the ITF Yang Push, that's where we're working on the Yang Push integration with Apache Kafka and time series databases. 
this effort starting a couple of years ago, but at each hackathon, we improve the code, we improve the protocol spec, we do interoperability. So, interesting to me. The second one is about anomaly detection and incident management. In the end, why do we do all this? Because we want to automate, we want to do closed loop, we want to go to autonomous networking, where we need less people configuring the CLI, right, and solving problems. We should have machine to do that. This is the end goal, but there are like baby steps that we have to do along the paths. So how does anomaly, uh, what is the anomaly life cycle towards closed loop? And the last point is the digital map modeling. Having a map in a consistent way of your network on which we could be looking at different layers, like the physical, the IP layer, the, the service layer, maybe the app layer at the bottom, maybe the optical layer, all this being interconnected. And another one happening in the world of ops. You know, if you know about FCAPs, fault, configuration, accounting, performance and security. Sometime I call that FCAPs plus E for energy because energy management is going to become very important. How we monitor that and how we could in the future optimize this. This brand new working group approved like last week is about the energy use and efficiency related metrics. And obviously it's based on Yang models. So 22 years later, like now, it's time to have this new workshop. It's time to review where we are again. So remember the dates, put them in your calendar. December 3rd. What are the objectives? The first one is to review the outcomes and the results of the previous workshop. All right. What is the current state of the art? What is the current deployment? Do you have operational barriers that prevent you to deploy what we've been doing in the ITF? Right? If you tell me I like Yang but, or I don't like Yang because, or I'm doing telemetry, etc., I want to understand the limitations, the hurdles, what we could be improving. And then the next objective is to explore new requirements, right? Like in the industry with network operators and protocol designers. I give a couple of examples over there. It could be about tooling. You know, great protocols, but not enough tooling. It could be open source, proof of concepts, multi-vendor, data consistency, richer observability with data and knowledge and semantic and metadata. It could be integration with business layer, automation, orchestration, and autonomy. And then, as a consequence, on the outcome of the workshop, we want to have a plan of action. So remember the RFC 3535 recommendations and requirements. We would like to have the same thing. How to participate in the workshop? Well, the way to go is to submit the short position paper, or at least an expression of interest, right? to this mailing list, which is a program committee. So by them, whenever your paper is accepted, that you could present at this workshop, okay? The deadline is pretty short. This is October 16, but, I put but with a dot, dot, dot. It's more important to us to get the feedback that to try to have a strict process so if you tell us, well, actually, I've got no time, but I would like to submit a paper on this by this date, I believe this is fine. If you are an operator, obviously, right, because this is what we're trying to, to target. What you could be doing as well is submit the online survey in which there are a couple of questions, and it would be a good step already in the right direction. You could also speak with the NEMOPS program committee, right? 
So I put in red my name. Find me on uh, LinkedIn or find me, you know, in the booths uh, over there at Knock Knock. Find me wherever this week. I'm here till Friday morning. I could even help you with a survey. We could even discuss, brainstorm. I want to collect your information. So I put on the left hand side a time commitment. Ideally, we would like you to write a paper. But we know how it goes. In the ITF, we say, write a draft, right? But sometimes you don't have enough time, which is like an obvious reason. So I'm here to help, OK? And if I have to collect the feedback verbally, I could just transcript it in, in surveys on your behalf. This is perfectly fine. So let me pause here. Is there any feedback at this point in time? I've got maybe three more slides with examples of questions to make you think. But is there people who would like to give feedback directly now? Who will be the first brave one? And I accept uh, compliments, but also tomatoes. I'm fine. <laughs> Carlos, tomatoes? <laughs> Hola, Carlos, de nuevo. Eh. I'm going to make the comment in Spanish first. Let me highlight that this is a great opportunity for you as operators to make your voices heard, because the protocols that will be managed in your networks in coming 10 years are the comments and ideas that arise from these workshops. So as far as possible, and as far as you consider this relevant, I urge you to make the effort to at least respond to the survey. Um, what is the, the, I mean, what is the scope of the workshop? It's just device configuration or are you looking into things like perhaps introducing some form of doing visibility checks like what we do with looking glasses, for example, which it's really hacky and really troublesome when you, when you need to, to see the, the, the traffic paths on the internet. So very good point. So it's not only about network elements. It's about networks. If you look at the requirement we had like 22 years ago, it's compulsory to look at the configuration of the entire service. And I would go one step further this day. It's compulsory to look at the complete monitoring and assurance of services these days, right? Whether you do it with data plane like IP fix, whether you do it with control plane like BGP monitoring protocol, whether you do it with management plane, with Yang, for example, because it's only whenever you combine those three, where traffic is supposed to go, you follow BMP or BGP. Where traffic is going with IPFX and looking at the management plane with the QoS counters and all of this, that you need to solve the network-wide problem. So in my mind, you're spot on that it's about something bigger than just config of network elements. This is the full closed loop that we would try to do in a network. Exactly. And I put in there like bullet points like integration issue with business layer, automation, orchest orchestration, taxonomy, observability. So one of them will have like common theme across operators. It would be great to have at least one submission paper on that target. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you. <laughs> So what I want to do now is maybe two, three slides that are examples of the survey questions, all right? Just to make you think. And then we could discuss offline. Now, typical questions is, what tools do you use for configuration management? What protocol do those tools use? Which issue did you encounter with those, right? So maybe you're still using the, the CLI, or maybe you're using Ansible, or maybe you're thinking that, oh, I want to use NetCom for RESCOM for GNMI. By the way, it doesn't have to be on the ITF protocols, right? GNMI is not ITF. Now, we want to understand which problem you have, what are your requirements. And the last point, remember the the two columns, requirements, 
and recommendation. Do you have new requirements and recommendations for us in the, in the ITF? This one is about conflict management. As Carlos was mentioning, it's not only about network elements, it's not only about config. Monitoring, same set of questions. Which tools do you use for network monitoring? What protocol do they use? Do you use streaming telemetry? And actually, whenever we say, do you use, maybe you don't, but do you want to use? And then, in that case, which problem do you have? Right? And we put examples of tools. Because maybe, if someone doesn't know which protocols are behind it, this is fine, right? But the protocol we mentioned, which one do you use? Syslog, SNMP, BMP, IP fix, Yang push, NMI, you name it. What about active probing? Do you use OWAMP and TWAMP? Right? Again, which recommendation? Which requirements do you have? And we try to do this for multiple context, configuration monitoring, and then choose your context and answer all these questions. If you care about audit and accounting, same questions. If you care about security management, same questions. And we've been trying to make this as wide as possible, and not only do config, right? So this is the type of questions that we might be asking to you. Think about that. So as a last slide, I'm going to put the survey again. I'm here at the booth in the introduction tomorrow at 4 in, in the week. So uh, feel free. We want to collect feedback from you. And with this, I'm waiting for your feedback either now or later on. Thank you. If we have no more questions for Benoit, let's give him a big round of applause. De todas maneras. Nevertheless, you can find him during